So I want to discuss some very important issues connected with, with the media and with the world in which we live. Um, bear with me, this could be perhaps a slightly longer video. There are a number of things I want to raise here. Um, firstly, I believe that the media as a collective concept, that is to say as a collective body, so to speak, um, is more powerful than any government. Um, even governments that have uh, iron control over the media, such as the Chinese government and, and others, the media collectively is more powerful than than any. Now, this power can be either benevolent or destructive. It's, it's abstract, depending on what way you look at it, depending on the perspective of how this power is used. Um, let me just start by making a sort of disclaimer or my own viewpoint that I don't believe any major network um, can call itself innocent in terms of being entirely neutral. I don't believe that exists. I believe CNN, the BBC, Fox and so on. And despite what Fox says, they are mainstream media. I find I always have a little chuckle when they say that they're not mainstream media. They very much are. Um, so, so all these networks, um, Al Jazeera, all of them are um, are biased to some extent. That goes without saying. So, I want to be very clear that within the course of this video, I am in no way intending to overtly defend any media network. Um, that's not my intention at all. But I do want to challenge the concept or the idea. And this is something that is very, very prevalent online. Of some of the so-called free thinkers who think that they're being enlightened and they think that they are... Excuse me, just get a bottle of water. Just keep talking as I'm... It's my new room incident. Yeah. Um, people who think that they're being free thinking and they think that they're being enlightened by... Basically going down an avenue of um, questioning Western media, questioning Western governments. Now, in itself, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's a good thing. Um, I think it is a good thing generally to be a questioning person, to not slavishly believe everything you hear. The problem is, when you start trying to find ways to vindicate your own belief system, through alternative media sources and through alternative sources. I've come across um, videos of people who are purporting to be journalists. Well, no reason to believe that they aren't journalists, but the question is what sort of journals? And it's titled things like, um, I've just come back from Syria. Everything the Western media is saying is lies. Okay, that's a provocative title. So I checked out the video. Um, this was an Irish journalist, forget her name now, but um, I thought, okay, she might be on to something, so listen to what she has to say. But then you start seeing the bias coming through, and when you hear so-called journalists say things like uh, the so-called state of Israel, so actually questioning um, a nation state, regardless of what the origins of that nation state are, actually questioning that state that then clearly whatever way you gloss it over whatever way you look at it there is a bias there you can't you can't pretend otherwise you cannot say that this is an investor the journalist trying to be independent when she is clearly pontificating her own views and to me that damages her credibility um completely even if the rest of the video is um is more independent even that one thing of saying the so-called state of Israel, it immediately gets me thinking, well, this is someone who, who is very anti-Israel, and that usually follows then the very anti-Western, and it becomes very, very difficult to see any credibility in that. And then you look at some of the links. Very often I see people who purport to be telling the truth about the whole thing, especially regarding the war in Syria, and you look at the link, may not be in the initial source, but it is certainly often in related sources. And lo and behold, what is it? Russia Today, 
press TV. Well, let's look at that for a second. Russia Today is the mouthpiece of the Russian government. Can anyone dispute that? Press TV is the mouthpiece of the Iranian government. In both cases, these are networks with a clear agenda of promoting the nationalistic policies of the respective governments. Sure, Fox News does it. But in the case of Fox News, it's blatantly obvious. With RT and Press TV, there is a disturbing number of people who think that they're being enlightened by quoting these sources and by endorsing these sources like they are a legitimate alternative media. They're not. They're absolutely not. The, the thing is, I never fall into the trap of saying, well, this is the BBC, so it must be the truth. Or this is CNN, so it must be the truth. But they do quote RT and press TV as if it is a fact. And then when I see uh, people connected with David Icke, who I think is a complete and utter I'm sorry if that's blunt, but, you know, th this is a guy who thinks he and he alone is enlightened. This is a guy who genuinely believes world leaders are reptilian shapeshifters. I mean, uh, have we really got to the point where people have become so opposed to Western governments and Western media that they have to endorse this sort of narrative? That they have to get to the absolute... The, the problem with conspiracy theories like this, and I'm not saying that, by the way, as an insult, because I don't believe that all conspiracy theories are mad or something. I believe that, like I say, it is legitimate to question things. But when you get to the point where everything is a conspiracy, where everything is a lie, then instead of just looking for truth, what you're actually trying to do is vindicate your own opinion. And you're actually trying to look for any source that would help you to do that. And if that includes foreign governments, if it includes foreign media, so be it. Because it's better to endorse those than to just sound like a crank. But the point is, anyone who endorses Russia Today or Press TV cannot claim to be independent. They just can't. Doesn't mean that they're right or wrong necessarily, but they at least cannot claim to be independent because they're not. They're just not. So when I see journalists who basically tap into the propaganda of the Assad regime and start to chirp out the line that the Assad government hasn't killed a single civilian and so on, which are blatant lies, whatever way you look at it. And independent observers in Syria have testified that they have seen government troops killing civilians. They have testified to this. They've testified to the excesses of the Assad regime. So for people to actually churn out his propaganda, um, the Russian state has been shamelessly doing this because they arm the Assad regime. And it's not that Western countries are any better. You know, we are shamelessly arming the Saudi regime. So it's like the great parts are playing these games in the Middle East. And um, I, I, don't, I really don't mind people criticising Western governments, but what I do object to is people criticising Western governments then turning on blinders to the Russian government or to the Iranian government. That, I think, is utterly unacceptable. Because you cannot claim to be a free thinker if you think that the Russian government is innocent or the Assad government is innocent or the Iranian government is innocent. If that's your position, I'm sorry, but you lose all credibility. Incidentally, the likes of George Galloway are not, you know, he has a sort of cult following, like he's some sort of credible person. As far as I'm concerned, George Galloway is a traitor. Why? Because he actively works for a hostile foreign government. That's the definition of treason. He works for Press TV, which is a body of the Iranian government. Frankly, I wish George Galloway would fuck off, because this is not a man who's only interested in vindicating the truth. He's not a brave whistleblower. He's nothing but a shameless apologist for dictators. I think he's a complete and utter disgrace. And, you know, we all know how brutal ISIS is. No, no mystery about that. But one of the biggest tragedies of this war, in my opinion, is everyone knows how brutal ISIS is. Okay? But because they have kind of overshadowed the Assad regime in their excesses, people forget that 
many Syrians detest the Assad regime. And these Syrians are not terrorists. They're not terrorist sympathizers. I, I have personally known people who hate ISIS, but they also hate the Assad regime. And people buy into this narrative like, oh, if Assad says they're terrorists, they must be terrorists. Certainly there's terrorists in Syria, no question about it. But this idea that everyone who opposes Assad is a terrorist is just shameless propaganda. And basically it's slandering men, women and children as being akin to jihadists when their only crime is to be in rebel-held areas. And it, it makes me very angry to see the amount of stupidity that is out there by people who think that they're being enlightened, but they're not. They're really, really not. No one can claim to know the whole truth. And for my part, I don't, I don't present BBC and say, oh, this is the truth, or CNN is the truth. But, you know, the idea that they have less culpability than the tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist who claims that they're independent but is endorsing any any outlet, any government that vindicates their point of view, give me a break. So as soon as someone claims that they're independent and then you look at the source and it's Russia T Today or Press TV, I mean, Russia Today... I really detest it as a news agency because, like I say, every every news agency is biased. But the thing about Russia today is they, they actually invite on critics of foreign governments and, and they invite them on like their official spokespeople. So they invite on retired CIA hacks and so on. And, and oh, look, we're going to spill the beans on them. They know everything. Um, you'll notice Russia today never, ever criticizes the Russian government, ever. They never criticise Putin. And whenever they have reports about Russia, there's always a sort of a simplistic nature to it. It's always a sort of... Um, like They do it with tinted glasses, if that's the right expression. And yet, when they're reporting something about the US, which we all know has plenty of problems, or the UK or France, they always do it with an extremely critical perspective. And there's nothing wrong with an international network scrutinizing any country i believe that no country is above scrutiny but when they do it when they clearly have a political agenda in doing it so for example when russia today is hell-bent on micro analyzing every single case of unrest in the u.s clearly they're doing it for an agenda they want america to look weak they want to say oh look at this is the decadent americans who how dare they criticize us and yet they will never report on for example the suicide crisis in the Russian military or the problem of far-right thugs beating up foreigners in Russian cities. You know, because if the West, if a Western media agency does that, they'll get into the nationalistic mode and say, oh, the West is always portraying Russia like gangsters. Personally, I take the view that British or American journalists who work for RT are akin to double agents. I mean, well, why would you work for the Russian government? And call yourself a journalist. I believe all journalists need to question to what extent is there a particular respective agency akin to the government of the country that it is in. And that applies across the board. It also applies to the BBC and CNN. CNN, um, I believe, has been incredibly pro-Clinton in this campaign. Fox, I can't say Fox has been pro-Trump, but it's been pro-Republican. Um, so there's bias everywhere. So so how do we find out the truth? Well, the first thing is, I don't believe we can. I don't believe, you know, people that say, oh, I don't listen to the media. I'm going to find out the truth for myself. How? Are you going to get a flight and go to Syria? And even if you do, even if you're on the ground, you still can't see everything that's going on. You know, um, this idea about being on the ground, you know, all the information, that's misleading. Certainly you'd get a first hand perspective, but it doesn't mean that you know everything that's going on you don't you know you can't be across the whole nation of syria in one instance so you can't know everything that's going on so that's the first thing nobody nobody can claim that they know everything i don't care how experienced a journalist you are i don't care how independent you think that you are nobody can know everything and that's the first thing 
And the second thing is, um, it is true that every media has some degree of bias. But there's a difference between saying that all media outlets are biased and attacking one source, like Western media, whatever that means, um, and then turning blinders on to Russia Today as an example, as a prominent example. So I, I think there's a profound hypocrisy in that. And getting through to these people, and th this is the thing, I, it's very difficult to engage in rational debate because they've got their blinders on. If you go to any of these sort of websites, uh, not websites, if you go to any of these videos on YouTube that pertain to be independent-minded and they're bashing Western media, all you see is this long line of comments like, oh, I'm an American and... Uh, I know our government are liars, and I believe everything Russia Today says. They don't say that, but that's the impression they give. And they think they're being enlightened. They're not. Because all they're doing is being useful idiots for a very aggressive nationalistic network like RT. There's nothing open-minded about doing that. And then there's a long list of comments like, oh, we always thought Assad was the bad guy. It turns out he's the good guy. Uh, no, he's not. Uh, and the naivety of some of these comments is profound. But if you try to engage with them, they just call you uh, a shell for Washington. They say, oh, you're, uh, you know, they're calling you all the names under the sun. Whilst arrogantly assuming that they're open-minded when they're not. You know, I, I don't pretend I know everything. And that's the difference between me and them. They, they seem to think that they know everything. They don't. Neither do I. I don't believe that anyone can know everything. What we have to do is try to be objective and just look at different sources. And somewhere along those different sources, try and get some fathom of truth. Um, I personally do consider independent monitors to be probably the best source. But the problem is there's not many of them around. Um, all I would say to people is be very wary when you come across videos pertaining to be free thinking journalists coming back from Syria is more often than not, they have connections to Press TV or Russia Today. They may not be directly employed to, by them, but very often they will have connections to them. And to me, that destroys their claim. As soon as they start pontificating their own views about Israel or whatever, you know, I'm not saying they're not... Incidentally, a, a point about journalists having opinions on things, this is quite important, actually. Um, I don't think... Uh, it's realistic to say journalists should never have an opinion. Journalists are human beings. Inevitably, they're going to have views on subjects. They're human beings. They have emotions. They're going to have opinions on subjects. That in itself is not a bad thing. But what I believe is critical, and this is something I believe the mainstream media, if I could use that term, has failed to do, it's critical that they show that that is just their opinion. So take, for example, Fox News, the O'Reilly Factor, or Sean, Ohana, Sean Hannity or whatever. I don't think they make any bones about the fact that that is their own opinions. However, they always put up fair and balanced. They shouldn't do that. They should say, this is my opinion, you can agree with me or disagree with me. But by constantly putting up fair and balanced, it only indicates that it's not. Because if it really was, you, you can't, it, even if you try to be fair and balanced, if you have a preset opinion on something, it's going to be very difficult to attain that. But there's another point here. I, I think that if journalists are pontificating their own views, they should say so. Because if they don't, if they don't, then their views become attached to whatever the network is. So, they, they they can have their views, but if that is their own independent views, put it this way, if I was an editor in a big news desk, I'd say, okay, you can have your opinion, but make sure the viewers know that that's your opinion. It's not the official position of this network. And I feel that a lot of the big networks have failed to do that. They have failed to... Um, Sky News um, frequently has their journalists pontificating their own opinions, especially in debate formats, something I really dislike when you get um, journalists. I mean, there's a big difference between asking a politician tough questions and just basically throwing in your own opinions and constantly interrupting them when you're meant to be doing an interview. It's something that Sky News is very uh, 
adapt at in recent years. Um, so I'm going to round this up, but what, what I would say is um, people might not agree with everything I'm saying here, but all I would say is think about it. Just think about how likely it is that these people who really say that they're really free-minded, to what extent are they really? Because if you really, really, really listen to them and take away your own biases, okay, so you might hear the American government, you might hear the Israeli government, try and put that to the side for just a second, just a second, and listen to what they're saying and think, is this really objective? Is it? And try to establish, um, you know, to what extent are they really trying to think critically or to what extent are they just trying to vindicate their own opinions? Because very often these journalists that claim that they're working independently do nothing of the sort. So, you know, you have to deal with it with scepticism if you are thinking clearly. I hope this has left people something to think about. Um, I find that it's a waste of time trying to engage with these people because they're so blinded by their hatred of Western governments and media that anything you say, they will try and turn it around and just present you as an idiot or a sheep or a Trump supporter or whatever, which I'm not, by the way. Incidentally, a lot of Trump supporters are, are not exactly fans of the American government anyway. That goes without saying. But, um, yeah, those are just some things, excuse me, those are just some things to think about. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching.